Okay, a border boy. What? Oh, happy Thursday. How are you? I am better than I have been in days. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Ashe, ashe. So we decided that today we're going to talk about um, initiating children into the tradition of Ifa, Orisha, Egbe, Egungun, what have you, and whether or not we believe they should have, wait till they have a choice, wait until they're older, <coughs> or initiate them yeah. while they're children. Would you like to go first? So you have two children. Yeah. Uh, so to me, my opinion is very divided because I am very into traditions and doing things that maybe have been done in your family for ages and kind of repeat and keep it in the, you know, keep it that way, which is what I did with Angelina, with her baptism, mm -hmm. and I wanted to do First Communion for her just because it was an experience that I had, and it's something that you do, and blah, 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 blah. But <clears throat> I also think that kids get to make choices and decide for their own. Obviously, at this age, I don't think they know much or what to decide, so I do believe if the parents kind of wants to pass on their tradition or their belief, initiate, baptize, or do anything in that thing, it's okay. I'm not against it 100%. But I... Well, you can't be against it because you did it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, well, but I can change my... In the, in the Catholic religion is what you're talking about. Yeah, in the experience that I had. For example, the first <laughs> communion, she does, it's not like something that she wants to do. And obviously for that, you kind of have to go study church and all mm. that. And I'm like, why do I even know about that for me to be even pushing for her to know about it. Mm, you know okay. what I'm saying? Did you have to do that? I didn't have to kind of do that because I... What? <laughs> didn't have to kind of do it? So I did, I think, in Cuba catechism classes. Okay. Um, I don't think I did that many. And when we came to the United States, my parents told the priest that I had already done the course, so they kind of just did the ceremony for me, <laughs> which is all I wanted. I just wanted to wear the dress and the pictures and kind of get married to God. Oh, That's what you do. God. So I did that, um, but again, I you know I didn't really get anything from it. So, so I don't know what to do when, when it comes to to kids oh talking God. about initiating to if I know there's a lot of people and opinions about that. Like, oh, why would they what do that to heard? their kid? Oh, yeah. okay, tell me. Oh. <laughs> why would they do that to their kid? You know, their kid doesn't know anything about that. Why put them through all of that stuff? And you know, I think that's something that the kid needs to do when they're older. So I've always heard those opinions. Mm. Um, because maybe those ceremonies or festivities or whatever it is that they go through are a little you were tough. there, sis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are a little tough, maybe or something for a kid. I can, I can. It's beast. Yeah, I can definitely see why people would feel that way. I don't know if I would. Sorry, I had a flashback to your initiation. I wish I could talk about it. <laughs> yeah. It was no. the best. Oh, God. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, like after that, <laughs> I can only imagine a child. <laughs> oh, Tristan was hilarious. Yeah. So I think it's up to the parent, and then I do think the kids will have a choice later on in life when they're old enough to decide whether they want to continue in that religion or in that route or with everything the parents gave them, or they just want to kind of like reborn again and like you know baptize them with another religion or just be atheist. Whatever they choose to do, they still have the option. So to me, it's, I'm a Libra, so it's very Libra-ish. <laughs> <what's> <laughs> I'm so lost. So you stand where in, in initiating to, I stand, in the tradition? If the parent wants to do it, I agree. If the parent thinks the kid is too small and it's something that they need to decide, I agree with that too. I don't have a preference. For your own children? For my own children? Um, well, I did it. I, I baptized Angelina for my own purpose. I'm talking about Inifa. In, in yes, yes. I think... Um, they're old enough so they can kind of like decide at this point. My new child, let's say if I was to have another one, mm -hmm. because with this one, they've had, you know, they did a, a ceremony I didn't mind because again, for protection, if I believe that they do this, um, it's gonna be better for them or they're gonna be better protected or maybe have a better destiny, whatever it is that I am thinking in my head for the purpose that I am doing the thing, yes, I would do it for sure. But since my kids are old enough to not make decisions, I don't think I have that with them, like if they wanted to initiate or not initiate, uh -huh. I think I would leave it up to them at this age. My young child, I don't know, I have to think about that. 
I don't know if I would. So you feel at this age, which is the age of? 12. 12? They're they, both 12? They're both 12. Okay. I, for some reason, I've got They're six days. months apart, so got there, there okay. is a point in the year where they're not the same age. Got it. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Um, yeah, I think <laughs> that would be something that I would talk to them about and see if, what they would like to do. If it's something that I believe is a necessity or something that I would take the action as a parent and make whatever decision I think is best for them. So you feel that there's a certain age where they should be able to decide for themselves? I think at 12, kids nowadays are having boyfriend, girlfriend, choosing to peers, cho choosing to do whatever they can choose if they want to go. I mean, they're older enough to kind of understand the purpose of their religion. If I was to explain, I think they can make a decision. Would yeah. it be a wise decision? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's the age gap for them to make the best decision. But I think with my kids personal at this age, I would talk to them about it. Got it. So... I have three sons. My eldest initiated right before he turned 18, and he chose it. Um, 17 years old, um, he had watched me for a couple of years, <coughs> and I started in the Lucumi Criollo tradition. <coughs> Sorry, y'all. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so he saw me, and then of course I met my husband, and we started practicing the traditional way, and it resonated for him and he was like, I want in. So I took him, Chris and I took him to Nigeria. He initiated to Ifa, Oshun Logun, and Obatala. That's uh, Keandre. Yes. Um, my, oh my God, Tristan's about to be 14. Middle child. Lord, Tristan, my middle child, he initiated when he was about to turn 12. Um, so he was 11 and his was a little interesting. Let me see if I want to get into that. So if I may ask, did you ask him or you decided for him or was he like, he had an input? I know this is kind of says this yes when he means no and no when he means yes and doesn't really embrace, you know, sometimes what he truly wants. So, like here, so here's the thing. We are an Ifa Arisha household. Point blank period. Gungun, Igbe, like this is our household, this is our tradition. And I remember when you asked my husband this question, obviously off camera, he told you that his reason for initiating our kids is because it's the tradition of the family. That's not my reason. And that's actually the first time You've I've heard his that. response. I thought that was really interesting. For me, it is about being able to care for my children to the best of my capabilities. Because remember, we go and we get our odus, and in our odus, we find we have this beautiful roadmap of what to avoid and what to walk towards. And you know what I'm saying? So if you I have... believe it's a necessity more than anything. You do yes. Because it's a great tool. It's, Why a, not? it's a great tool to have to raise your children. Why and not offer it to them at an early exactly. age and expose them I to am, adulthood? This is not that. about them living as priests. If they want to practice any other thing, that's absolutely okay. encouraged by us. It is about having the tools for them to live their best life. Um, let's see. What was I going to say? So Tristan, Tristan was an interesting case. I'm trying to see where I'm gonna go with this. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, we didn't have our son for about three and a half years. Um, his mother is now deceased. And, um, that is when we finally were able to get custody of him. It was a long, tumultuous battle in child custody. And then at some point, like, she just, like, fell off the face of the earth with him and we didn't know where he was. She was also initiated into the tradition on the Creole side. And um, somewhere along the line, she decided to give her Arisha away or whatever she did with him, I don't know. And she was actually studying to become, um, she was actually studying Judaism. And she, during this course of time where she had um, our son kept away from us, she did everything in her power to turn him against Ifa and Arisha, which she knew was the practice of our household. So with all that being said, by the time we got Tristan back, not only was there a severe trauma and brainwashing because of the child custody and everything else everything, yeah. there was the aspect of he was coming into a household where he had been told that this is the devil 
these things had been done to hurt his mother, like all this stuff. And um, that is what his um, understanding of what Ifa and Arisha was. It's like, you, it's like witchcraft and you use it to hurt people and blah, 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 which is not even how we practice. Um, so to answer your question, because I use this tradition to take care of myself, to better myself. My husband does it to better himself, to take care of himself. I use it as tools to better my children and take care of my children. It was not an option, but I was patient with him. Like, yeah. it was like, this is going to happen. It's just a matter of when. And I had to teach him Ifa. So every day that he was here, and see, he moved in in 2017. And he initiated in 2019. I actually got the uh, reminder on Facebook. This is actually the, the week that we were in Mexico. Mexico. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm sorry I'm disgusting with my, <laughs> my blowing my nose. But anyways, um, so it took two years of him watching. And I was like, I'm going to show you Ifa. And I'm like, me and your dad live Ifa. And I'm like, and I want you to see, is it a monster? Is it, you know, like, so he would see me doing a bowl and praying for the kids at the school. He would see me praying for his friends. I would take, you know, he had his Ishefa, which is a hand of Ifa. It's something that sometimes is given for those who either don't want to fully initiate to Ifa, but want to have like a, a an Adimu Ifa, like a, a an Ifa to pray to, an Ifa to take care of, but it's not your actual full-blown Odu. Um, what was I going to say? So he had that from the time that he was uh, like two years old, I believe. Um, so he would go and pray to that and talk to that and I would watch him and it was funny because he naturally like yeah, he's you know natural. this he's a natural like if, you, if he's not thinking it out in his head like Ifa is his first let's ask Ifa like, like it's just hilarious but it's when he gets when he starts getting in his head and remembering the trauma and the brainwashing is when the your defense hair. mechanism comes back up exactly yeah so it finally came down to in 2019 and his biggest thing was he didn't want to cut his hair and you know what I was like, that's a big thing. Like in our tradition, in our lineage, let me be clear, in my lineage, in Sha um, the men cut their hair. The women, it's not compulsory for them to cut their hair. Okay. Yeah. So which is something which is a reason why I would never, never contemplate it, even going anywhere near the Cuban tradition to what? initiate because of the hair cutting for me at least. Oh, well, in the Cuban tradition, women, I mean, it's starting to become okay in some places in Cuba, but they're not even allowing women to initiate to Ifa. Yeah. Like, I don't know. know any, any, any Criollo practitioner. Yeah, they, girls in Cuba, they don't, they cannot <laughs> go to Ifa directly, but they do Santos and they do other Correct. ceremonies. But for those, most of them, you have to kind of like, yeah, well, same hair for, and same for traditional Arisha, your hair's coming off. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, Tristan, he didn't want to cut his hair and, um, Chris was like flexing on that. And I'm like, it's not worth it. He's saying that he's willing to go to Ifa now. Like with all this child has been through and with all the brainwashing, he's just like, let me keep my hair. And I'm like, come on. So we talked to our Lua and our Lua is like, don't worry about it. Comes down with a wounded day ring. And, and that old dude says that he's an will from heaven. So it's amazing that it was it's sad, actually. It's not even amazing. It's sad that people work so hard to keep him away from Ifa when it's yeah. absolutely his destiny. This is, it's, it's, it's who he is. He's, you know, Ifa is in him. And it's funny. Well, whatever. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> but, um, so that's Tristan. So he initiated and it was hilarious. It was much like your situation. Like he was like, Shewa, what is happening? <laughs> It's a lot. It's a lot to take in. And then at the end of it, he was like, all right. Like, him and Mimi yeah. were talking, and they were doing their thing, and it was fun. Once you, like, it's, it's an experience to go through. It's, it's beats. Maze? Little fun Maze mopping day? Maze little one. Yes. Yeah. He initiated at eight. He was 18 months at the time. We just got back from um, Nigeria in September. And my husband, again, was like, oh, he's too young, whatever. But all of a sudden, he was like, Gucci with it. And what was dope is not only Maze, there was two other children that at his same age, like he was the oldest, but they're in close proximity. 
they initiated with him. So my husband said it sounded like a nursery inside Ibodu. He was like, <laughs> but man, to see those fathers go through and like support their sons, like, cause those kids went in the way the grown men did. They, yeah. didn't, they didn't go hold anything back. They, they they initiated like it was so it was not baby proof it was not baby proof at all. it was it was beast so my point is like for me it supports my children and they chose me to be their guide here in the marketplace so i am going to do my best to guide them well and this is a tool that i find absolutely imperative to have yeah and it's what i'm gonna use so, um, I, I'm, that, that's it for me. I think I'm. <sighs> so with the other religious, do you feel the same? Parents always choose and guide them the best way that well, they can. Well, with other religions, is different. I mean, I, I can't speak on Islam. I don't know much about it. Christianity, I know a lot about. And with Christianity, it is supposed to be a choice. Because they do it usually when they're older, right? Because it's supposed to be a choice. You're supposed to choose Jesus you Christ want, yeah. as your Lord and Savior. So you can't do that if you're an infant. You know, like, and, and, and Catholicism, I think, is a little different than the rest of the branches of Christianity. I don't know much about Catholicism either. Yeah, I kind of want to. I know it's, it's very common to have your infant baptized. Yeah. So like, I don't know their doctrine on choice. Like, I, don't, I don't know. I definitely went through the Episcopal Church to get married and for baptism because there's really no rules. Okay. And no, like, you must do this class or be at the church for this amount of time or we must see you every month. It's kind of like more like a choice where you go if you want to, don't go. I can't okay. remember the explanation, but no paperwork needed. Okay. Which is kind of like how I like to flow through life. No rules, no preparation, no regulations. Let me just. Or you could have just gone to the courthouse. Yeah, but they. For a baptism? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know. If for wedding, married, yeah. yeah. He wanted to get married by that priest, Father Cutie, who was kicked out of the Catholic Church because he had an affair with a woman and he's not supposed to. So he went to this church where they accept him. Got married, had a daughter. So that's why he can't put any girls in that church. <laughs> Episcopal is a place to go if you guys want to follow no rules. Oh, my God. <laughs> Or, <laughs> so, when it comes to choice, again, with Ifa, so my children, practicing Ifa is literally choosing to look within yourself every day to be your best possibility. Yeah. So that is, that is literally what I try to teach them when, when we're talking about practicing Ifa. It's just living your best life, your best possibility, and not being afraid to look at yourself hardcore and see how you're coming up and standing up in the world, standing up in your relationships, you know, like, it's all a choice. And so no matter what they're doing and whatever they practice, they're always gonna be practicing in God. Cause I, I've, I've taught my children, look at yourself. Yeah, that's Ifa. It's introspection. Looking at yourself is probably one of the smartest things that we can teach a child from a very early age. Ashe. Which we don't. Ashe. What is he doing to you in school? What did he do? What yeah. the teacher said? Yeah. So Angie got a detention. I'm like, can you please give me this paper? At least take an accountability that you got this detention because you did something wrong. She's like, I did, mom. You don't remember? Um, whatever she did, but you know, it's kind of like, what did you do wrong? You know, very important lesson. That's <sighs> so what I'm doing for the past two weeks, looking at every little single thing of myself, and it's not fun. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dear God. Maybe as a child, practicing from then, it will be probably less hard to do it as an adult. Yeah. It's rough looking at yourself. And this is one of the reasons why we in Ifa don't divine for ourselves. Because when you step in front of Ifa, like you need to know that Ifa is going to be like opening, opening your portal yeah. to say, this is what you got going on and why you got it going on. And if you're not in a space to look at yourself you're not you're gonna miss the whole fucking message yeah you're gonna run away and <laughs> the reading is gonna be void because you're not gonna know what the hell ifa said because you're not looking at yourself so it's best for serious matters to go to another diviner so that you can get those hardcore yeah. messages dear god what happened? sorry i can't keep my legs in the way that i want to okay but yeah <laughs> so yeah 
So that was good. So, um, no, I was just thinking. I was analyzing on myself here as we talked about this because obviously my initiation to Ifa is not something that I was like, oh my gosh, I want to. Not that I didn't want to because I've always wanted to do something. I just didn't want to go through all the regulations, the rules, and the whole process. But I always thought that I really didn't need to do it because I am already blessed and, you know, like I already have all the tools that I need, whatever, whatever. So I was just, how can I answer the question about my kids? But for myself, I wasn't even like all about making that decision until, you know, later on in life as an adult going because I think I thought I needed it in order to prove up, to do anything or to accomplish anything or whatever. Like in my mind, I thought, or I think that, um, you don't need to baptize or go to any religion to mm. achieve anything or to have the religion in your in your heart or use the tools is what I'm trying to say. How has Ifa changed your life or bettered your life? I think um, the initiation came along such a important process or transition in my life. It just basically kind of like led me to doing all the personal work I'm doing now and kind of like pushing me to be like, hey, you're not perfect and you also have defects and you also need to look at yourself in order to make anything work. Don't come over here pointing fingers or kind of like, it's not my fault or oh my God, I've been this or I've been poor because of this or whatever. So it's just basically taking a lot of accountability and looking at myself a lot. Yes. And pushing me through, you know, to go through those things and, and programs and and freaking truth and emotions and all of that stuff. So that ha that's what it's done for me. What I have realized is Ifa is like the training wheels and getting us back to our perfection, how we came here, how we were born. It's like we were born, like I watch Maze and this kid like knows exactly what his body needs. Like, whether I'm talking about food or medicine, like he'll turn away like, no, nah, I don't need that. Like he just, knows what he needs, right? Yeah. And like he knows what he's doing without me having to pour any of my belief system or whatever or what I think on him. So I watch him a lot. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I watch him a lot. And between him and Tristan, I mean all of my kids in some form or fashion have taught me Ifa on a whole nother level. But it's like it's Watching Maze is like the closest that I've been to God in a long time because he's like, like he's right there. He's very newly from heaven. So it's like, I understand that he follows the training wheels to get us back to right there, that moment before society, our parents, Everything. teachers, everybody, babysitters, aunts, uncles poured all of their stuff onto us. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's where Ifa gets us back to. It's really cool. And we can actually touch bases on, or I don't know, touch bases because we haven't touched bases on this, but we can talk about how in Nigeria, I believe, how the kids from a very little age they get sent to to camps for Ifa school. Or like so they go they go to different houses, different compounds, because remember it was colonized, so their houses are called compounds. So um, and they go train for years. At different, yeah, typically it's the sons. No one's sending off their daughters to go stay with Baba Laos. But they're actually, I actually just, <coughs> sorry. I met a young lady. Her name is Tayo. She took such good care of us when we were in Nigeria. And her son actually is one of the ones, his name is also Famakinde, and he was born like a few days after Mays in, in March. So they're like truly, truly brothers. So anyways, she went to an Ifa school in Nigeria. I cannot remember who the, the, the founders of that school are. I didn't even know there was a school until she told me, because I thought it was so awesome that there was a school there. So she went and got the Ifa training, but she's not initiated. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, because one of the things I was talking about with my Yeye Fayomi, um, who's like my mentor, she's not like, she is my mentor in Ifa, um, Aboro Boyeia. She was, I was like, how do we get funding to this school so that there can be scholarships for these graduates to initiate so that they can actually be able to practice. Yeah. yeah. Because there's one thing, you got it, babe? <laughs> <He's so drunk. laughs> there's, there's, there's one thing, I think you're good. 
Yeah, I think you're good. You shouldn't be safe. All right, love you. Go take your medicine. All right. There's one thing to have the knowledge of Ifa, but there is something that is very important about having that initiation that be that allows you to be able to, when you divine and you do those at bows, there's like a protective layer in everything that goes over you. There's also access points for you to understand things on a whole other level. So that's why the initiation is important as well as the knowledge and well, the education of Ifa. Yeah. You know, like if anybody can go learn Ifa, Ifa is not a secret. First of all, and <laughs> I know that's gonna be like a big <sighs> between, you know, like Criollo and traditional. And traditional, we're like everybody gets to share the knowledge. Everybody gets to know the knowledge. It's, 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 it's here for the taking. You just gotta come want it and yeah, and want to be a everybody. part of it. It's for everybody. Um, I don't even know what's going with this. Ugh. So yeah. Um, I think that was good. So, in regards to the opinion about the kids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, right? I really want to pick a topic. Oh, go! Just so... So, yeah, we have, like, a few minutes left. Yeah, not necessarily for today, but for next time. And then we're going to have this topic. Okay? Is that okay? Okay. I'm going to close my eyes better. I did it. <laughs> That's so to. strange. Give me one. You are I so... got two. What is wrong with you? Pick one. Okay, this one. <clears throat> Giving credit. Uh. Giving credit. That's all that's written? Yeah. Obviously, I wrote it, so... <laughs> Giving credit. So I would love um, some comments or opinions about this topic before we talk about it Can you tell people time. what you're talking about? Giving credit. How do you feel when people don't give you credit? Or do you think you give you get credit enough? Or do you like giving credit to people? Do you catch yourself not acknowledging anything that people do but crying about people not giving you credit? How do you feel about giving credit? Because I think it's important to give credit, for do sure. Do you give credit to yourself? I I'm starting to give more credit to myself I for think sure. A hundred percent. That's, what I would that's like number to talk one. About. Giving more credit to yourself. Yeah. For sure. Giving yourself credit. How much credit do you give yourself? If you're even giving any credit to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. If I don't give credit to myself, I really have not a lot of people giving credit to me, so must be me. <laughs> <laughs> so if y'all wanna give me some credit on the comments, please. I love getting that. What would so you like credit be, on? Anything. <laughs> <laughs> on the comments, I don't know. Like, um, I like the show credit. <laughs> I like how you talk credit. <laughs> I don't know, any credit. You are so hilarious. <laughs> we'll be nice. Ashe. Well, I love how you are an amazing aunt. Thank you. You're an amazing mom, an amazing aunt. Like, I love how... You have so much energy for this running around and doing things for the kids. I just be like, go what, go with Tia, Yanacy, because Mama's tired. <laughs> you like, you um, you do a lot for the community here in Homestead. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're giving me credit. Thank you, sis. I love it. Go ahead. You literally just said you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for that. She does a kids club and she does um, a lot of work at what park is that? Fasulo Park. Fasola? Fasulo. Fas There's no sh it's S-U-L-O. You know what? Like, because I keep thinking like it's Nigerian. Fasulo? <laughs> Fasulo Park. In my head is Shola. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're actually meeting there tomorrow. Ashe. So thank you. Thank you for putting in the effort. She has like, I don't know how many meetings with the mayor of Homestead and this other pastor gentleman that you do community work with. Like, this is an Ianifa that's here to make some changes. So yeah, I'm excited about that for sure. Thank you for keeping our kids healthy. She also is an advocate for Juice Plus. So like when she's here with my kids, and I mean, I'm gonna have to order some more now, she's making sure that they're healthy and getting their nutrients by way of her Juice Plus products, which are compacted with um, um, vegetables and fruits and yes. nutrients. Love it. And they come in gummies and um, 
capsules and they come in, what's it called, um, shakes. I'm sorry, y'all don't feel well. But I am a big fan of them and I'm about to be placing another one. But the point is like, it's a really great way to get your kids to eat their vegetables if they have a hard time with that, to make sure they're getting the nutrients they need. I haven't seen this lady sick, um, probably, I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen her sick. So that's why I'm ordering more Juice Plus, because you see me, you see her. <laughs> Sick, not sick. <laughs> Get your juice plus, people, like I'm about to do. <laughs> Is that credit? You yeah. like that? Cheers to that. Cheers. We good? Yes. All right. Have See a you guys day. in the next one, right? Real Ashe.